Hello, my name is Mia Shem. I'm 21 years old from Shoham. At the moment, I'm in Gaza. They have operated on my hand here at the hospital. They've taken care of me. They're giving me medicine. Everything is okay. The only thing I'm asking is that you bring me home as soon as possible to my family. Mia Shem became the hostage every Israeli knew. She was in the thoughts of every Israeli soldier before going into war. She was held in Hamas captivity for weeks, injured in a small room with no daylight, sitting on a mattress while a guard was across from her, watching her 24-7. I can see his face in my mind. His eyes are burned into my memory. Sitting in front of him, she decided she will come back. She will survive this. And for the first time, she's speaking candidly on the isolation and the brutality. I was not allowed to cry. Why? Because if you will cry, we'll send you to the tunnels. I was in a tiny room, eight feet by eight feet. Two people were in it, me and a terrorist, looking at me. 24-7, examining me. I was afraid he would rape me. There's a fear. Of him taking his weapon and putting a bullet in my head with no warning. The room was closed. They would throw food once a day. Some days there was no food. The kids would open the door, look inside, talk about me, laugh about me. They looked at me as if I was an animal. I was afraid anything could happen at any moment. He could touch me. Did he ever do something like that? No. No, only because his wife was outside the door. If we were there alone, something was bound to happen. In this small room, there were rules. Mia wasn't allowed to talk or move or even cry. Once I was choked up with tears, he looked at me and said in Arabic, enough, stop crying or I'll send you to the tunnel. I'm telling myself, stay strong, don't fall apart here, you'll be back home soon. That's what I was telling myself all the time. Mia understood that in order to survive, she needed to pretend to play the cruel game of the terrorist that was sitting across from her. Once he lost it, he started crying and took his Kalashnikov. I was sure he was about to put a bullet in my head. I got close to him and sat down and asked, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why are you crying? He told me that two of his friends died in an Israeli attack. Secretly, I was elated, but I was like that playing the game, you know? I didn't see daylight for 54 days. I also didn't move, so I was barely walking. My legs were shaking. Were you able to sleep there? Maybe for an hour? You can't really sleep when a Hamas terrorist is sitting and staring at you. I can hear the strikes, heavy strikes, massive strikes. The windows shattered on me. There were a few days when I lost my hearing. I wasn't scared from the strikes for a moment. It cheered me up. And then one day, it was completely silent, and I told myself something is happening. The ceasefire between Hamas and Israel came into effect. When the exchange of prisoners and hostages started, Mia was moved to another location. There, after almost 50 days alone, she met other hostages. We were all in the same boat. And then what? They tell people daily who's getting released? It was a Russian roulette. It was the most difficult thing. <laughs> that some are released and some others are not? She was released in the final exchange, and the moment she said goodbye to the hostages in Gaza does not leave her. On her way home, Hamas shot this video. People uh, very good, very kind to me. All of them are full good and the kindness and everything. Till then. You know you're seconds away from going back home and Hamas terrorist is shoving a camera in your face. He told me, say the people of Gaza are nice, say good things. What can I say? You're crap?
Karen, Mia's mum, did everything she could for this moment. They are together again. But her best friend Elia, that was with her at the party and was kidnapped right next to her, was killed. The IDF extracted his body from Gaza. Mentally, she is still in Gaza, and no one knows how long it will take until she'll return. But physically, she's here, exactly like she dreamed all those nights in captivity. This was my dream. I can't believe I'm here. At home.